Good morning, cowboys and cowgirls. That was a cowgirl? What? Oh. Good morning. <laughs> Woo! No, I was wondering, my, the deep voice cowgirl there. Hallelujah. We've been, uh, how many know we've been studying on the Holy Spirit? Yes. Has anybody learned something new about the Holy Spirit that you didn't know before we started eight weeks ago? Do you realize it's been eight weeks? <laughs> I, it it kind of, I was looking at, we, Pastor Jerry and I were talking and, and uh, kind of consulting with each other, you know, and we think we're about through for this series anyway on the Holy Spirit, and uh, we'll be starting something else, but I tell you what, I've learned a lot. I've learned a lot about the Holy Spirit, you know, because we started out with the fact that, you know, the Holy Spirit, a lot of people think, Holy Spirit, ooh, you know, some deal floating out somewhere, because he how many have seen the Holy Spirit? So you don't. You don't see the Holy Spirit, but you can see the manifestations of the Holy Spirit, can't you? In people's lives and the way they live and what they do. And with God working in us, and that's what uh, is, has come so alive to me, is my body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Turn to your neighbor and say, I'm the temple of the Holy Spirit. See, if you know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, the Bible says that the Holy Spirit comes to indwell you and to live within you. So wherever you go, God's there. Because the Holy Spirit is God. The third person of the Trinity. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. 2 Corinthians 13 and 14 has been our key verse for this whole series. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. Aren't you grateful for His grace? I tell you what, that we don't get what we deserve. We get what we don't deserve, and that's God's grace. He gives it to us. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God. How many appreciate Pastor Jerry's teaching on the love of God? Man, alive. Wow, that was so wonderful. And the communion, everybody say communion. communion. That's fellowship, that's partnership. If you look up the word in the Greek and everything, it's the communion, the partnership, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And he doesn't just leave it there. He says, and amen, so be it. Amen means so be it. So the Holy Spirit wants to fellowship. He's in us. We need to fellowship with him each and every day. We need to have a time. We've covered so many different things. And uh, today I want to talk to you about the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Everybody say gifts. gifts. Gifts of the Holy Spirit. 1 Corinthians chapter 12. You know, Paul thought it was so important that when he was writing his letter to the Corinthians, Paul spent three full chapters talking about the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And uh, he starts off here in, in uh, chapter 12, and we won't cover all three chapters today. Everybody say thank you. Okay. Because I sure would like to, but uh, No. Now concerning spiritual gifts. Uh, you see that now concerning? Do you know it's interesting? You know I'm just a little weird anyway. But did you know that there are six places in the, in the First Corinthians where he says now concerning? Now concerning. I read the, I read the book, you know, uh, in preparation of all this and everything. Anyway. If somebody ever plays trivia with you, you can say, hey, I know something. Yeah. Now concerning, well, the Corinthians had problems in their church. Unlike Cowboys for Jesus, they had some problems going on in their church. Different people were having things going on in their lives and everything. And so he's writing and he's saying, you know, now concerning offerings, now concerning the, and so now we're concerning spiritual gifts. Brethren, I don't want you to be ignorant. Come on. How many? Well, I'm not going to say. <laughs> Pastor Jerry loves to ask questions, you know, but he doesn't really want you to raise your hand, you know. But how many are a little ignorant when it comes to spiritual gifts? You're not for sure you know whatever the Bible has to say about spiritual gifts, you know. And so <laughs> we got one honest guy in the group here. No. Uh, anyway, it's a gift of God. Spiritual gifts are a gift from God. There's nine of them that we're going to cover 
and uh, won't cover all nine of them today. We'll start hopefully on some of them today and then finish up next week. But uh, t- this week and next week, and, and we'll kind of finish uh, the whole thing of Lord willing, the gifts of the Holy Spirit. But gifts are different than fruit. The last three Sundays, Pastor Jerry has taught, especially last Sunday, man, I listened to that while we were uh, traveling and coming back from Colorado. And we drove straight through 17 and a half hours uh, getting home that day. But uh, did you know you can, you can find Cowboys for Jesus on your phone? Cowboysforjesus.com, and then they got sermons. And so we were listening to all the things that we missed, uh, you know, on our, on our phones as we're driving or whatever. And uh, where am I going with all that? <laughs> oh, yeah, fruit of the Spirit. <laughs> and so he talked last week on fruit of the Spirit. Well, a gift is different than a fruit. And I'm not going to reteach his sermon by any means, but a fruit matures, Right? A fruit comes natural, right? I mean, if you're part of the tree, the fruit comes. Yes? Yes. Okay. And so that fruit, it doesn't doesn't just all of a sudden become an apple, right? I mean, it's got to grow. A cherry has got to grow. There's a time of growth, a time of maturity, and then a time that it's ripe. But it comes naturally. If you're connected to the tree, the fruit comes. If you're connected to the vine, the fruit comes. A gift is different. A gift is something that is given and what? Received. See, God's grace gives us the gift of the Holy Spirit different than the fruit of the Holy Spirit. But just as the fruit, if, we're, if we have the Holy Spirit on us, we have His fruit. Now we've got to develop that fruit. You've got to do a little fertilizing, a little watering, come on, to help the fruit grow. He does the pruning. It's, Brother Jerry, he said it. He says, if you're producing fruit, the Lord will prune the tree so it will produce more fruit. How many has ever had a little pruning going on in your life? Woo! But we're producing fruit. Okay? Gifts are different. Gifts are given, and gifts have to be received. It's God's grace that gives the gift through the Holy Spirit, but it's our faith that receives that gift. Come on. Let's skip down to uh, James chapter 1. I'm pulling a plug on him here, but... How many appreciate Brother Robert? He's doing a good job back there. Hallelujah. Thank you. Do not be deceived, my beloved brethren. Doesn't want us ignorant. Doesn't want us deceived. Okay? Let's see. For every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and comes down from the Father of lights with whom there is no variant or variation or shadow of turning. What does it mean? It means that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. God is the same. The Holy Spirit is the same. God, through the Holy Spirit, is giving gifts, spiritual gifts, unto those that will receive it by faith and operate in them in their lives. And what he's saying is it's a good gift. You know, uh, uh, when we get into these, you're going to see, but a lot of times the gifts of the Holy Spirit... can bring or will bring division. Did you know that whole churches and denominations have been divided over one little thing in the Bible? That's why we got, I mean, we were in one, t- I was in a small town in Colorado, uh, Delta, Colorado. If, if you ever get a chance to get some Delta peaches, they are delicious. I mean, it is the country for peaches. Uh, but in Delta, Colorado, we were driving through there and everything. We went to Cowboy Church. I got to tell you, I got pictures of it, Pastor. This Cowboy Church was meeting in an a, a auction arena, you know, a, a cattle, cattle auction arena. And so, 
you know where they run the cattle through? And, you know, the auctioneer has his table back there and, and all. Well, they got, what do they have? They got fences, right? A big cage. So it separates the animals from all the people in the stands and everything, right? Guess where they got the preacher? <laughs> in the cage. But don't laugh too hard, Jan, because the praise team was up there also. <laughs> Anyway, where's I'm going? Oh, yeah. If we're driving through, we're trying to find this church, right? Because, I mean, it's a cowboy at the cross church in Delta. And, and, and a great, great little church. And, uh, but in fact, <laughs> the pastor was preaching on husbands and wives. And he started off preaching on wives. He said, I'm so glad I'm in this cage. Because <laughs> he started doing some, well, anyway, you just had to been there. Where am I going? Oh, there were so many different churches. I mean, there was the, the first church of the so-and-so, and then the second church of the first church of the so-and-so, and the third church of the first church of the second church of the so-and-so. And, you know, all of these different, and I mean, literally, there, there must have been, and this is a small town. And we just saw church after church after church. And I was thinking about this because, you know, you can get one thing, and somebody get upset about it. But did you know what? We're going to find out today that God doesn't want division. He wants unity. But unity does not mean uniformity. Did you catch that? He doesn't want uniformity. He wants individual differences. That's what makes the world so great. But he wants unity within that. So instead of drawing a circle and blocking these people out and saying, me, my four, and no more, let's draw a big circle and include their four in our circle. You see what I'm saying? And that's what the gifts of the Spirit is all about. It's including the whole body of Christ. The gifts of the Spirit are for the body of Christ. They're gifts given by God. They're good gifts, and they're for us all. Uh, 1 Corinthians 12, verse 4. There are diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit. Everybody say, same Spirit. Same spirit. There's diversities, come on. There's the individualist, but there's the same Spirit. It's the Holy Spirit that's operating in each and every one of these. Verse 5. There are differences of ministries, but the same Lord. Amen. The individuals, there's differences. Are you still with me? So we don't have to divide over this. We unify with it. What would it be like without a harmonica up there? What, what would it be like without the guitars up there? Huh? Come on, see? There's different ministries. Who would think that... You know, how many get ministered to by their praise and worship? I do. You know? I, it, it helps me to enter into the presence of the Lord. What if there wasn't somebody back there working the camera? If there wasn't somebody back there on the soundboard? See, these are ministries. You are being ministered to every time that they switch a knob or switch a slide. Every time somebody gets up and tells you about Samaritan's Purse and how you can be a missionary to the world. See, the church is made up of all these different ministries. What if they were all harmonica players? Huh? Come on. How boring it would be. Are you with me? So the gifts and ministries, that's what he's talking about. He's trying to lay a groundwork here about the gifts of the Spirit. Verse 6. And there are diversities of activities, but it is the same God who works all in all. There's children, church workers, there's greeters, there's people in the kitchen. See, we're talking about the body of Christ, each having their difference. Well, just like we have it in the, can I say natural, but in, in our talents that we share with the body of Christ in the church to make the church work. There are also spiritual gifts that he wants to operate in the church. There are spiritual gifts that he wants to use to minister to the body of Christ. Verse 7. 
It says, but the manifestation, I think that's a neat word, manifestation, because we can't see the Spirit. You can't see the Spirit, you can't hear the Spirit, you can't feel the Spirit. The Spirit is there, the Spirit is in us. But it has to be manifested, and some of the ways that it is manifested is through these gifts we're facing to talk about. He's laying a groundwork to just show you there's not division, there's unity, there's individual, there's not uniformity, but there is unity in the way at all because it's all the same Spirit, it's all the same Lord, it's all the same God that is operating and manifesting itself in the body of Christ. And it says it is given, or, or the manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one. Everybody say each one. Each one. What each one is he talking about? To each believer. To each one that will receive the gift that he's going to give. For what? Is profit good? How many know that there's a profit and a loss? Which is better? Profit. is for the profit of all. For the whole body of Christ. The spiritual gifts are given to us individually... Because mine will be different than yours, or it could be the same. You might use your gift different than I use mine. Amen. Huh? It says, because the Spirit is in us, it's the gifts of the Holy Spirit that's operating or manifesting itself so that we can see it, so that we can hear it, but it's each of us doing it in how God's using us. You understand? It, 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 am I beating that dog to... I don't mean to, but I, I just want you to understand that it doesn't cause division, it causes unity if we will recognize it, that each of us has a part. And he goes on and carries this out. Romans 5.5 5. Now hope doesn't disappoint because the love of God, everybody say love of God. Love God. Brother Jerry, love of God. Oh, I got so much out of those. I'm still looking over those scriptures, Pastor. Because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts. God's love is poured out through us by the Holy Spirit who He's given to us. If you'll let the Holy Spirit lead you, if you'll let the Holy Spirit guide you, if you'll let the Holy Spirit use you, you can be a channel of blessing to so many people that the love of God will just pour out to you, through you, to somebody else. And that's what He's talking about here. Well, what exactly are those? 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 8. I want to read the list to you, and then we're going to talk about them uh, the rest of today and then uh, next week. For to one is given the word of wisdom through the Spirit. To another, the word of knowledge through the same Spirit. To another, faith by the same Spirit. To another, gifts of healings by the same Spirit. To another, the working of miracles. And we could add by the same Spirit, because that's what's implied. To another, prophecy by the same Spirit. To another, discerning of spirits by the same Spirit. To another, different kinds of tongues by the same Spirit. To another, interpretation of tongues by the same Spirit. Okay, nine gifts, spiritual gifts, of the Holy Spirit, given to each one as the Holy Spirit leads. Verse 11. But one and the same Spirit works all of these things, distributing. Everybody say distributing. distributing. To each one individually as He wills. Not as you want. As He wills. The Holy Spirit, I want to be used by the Holy Spirit. Amen. But I can't tell the Holy Spirit how, how He's going to use me. No. Huh? Have you ever tried that? Have you ever tried telling God what He's going to do? It doesn't work. I've tried it. Come on. But I, He's got all of these gifts. And you can, you can divide these gifts down. In fact, right here. Uh, I was reading a book, the, the, uh, the God I Never Knew, by Robert Morris. It's a book on the Holy Spirit. I really suggest, if you haven't read it or if you 
still want more information about the Holy Spirit, get this book, God I Never Knew by Robert Morris, pastor up in Dallas. And in that, where he's describing the different gifts of the Spirit, he breaks them down. See, I'm from old school, back in the 70s when I learned this, it was uh, it was the uh, gifts of revelation, it was the gifts of power, and it was the vocal gifts. And, and he puts it, and I like the way, so I'm going to use it, but the discerning gifts. The discerning gifts is the word of wisdom, the word of knowledge, and the discerning of spirits. And then he divides into the dynamic gifts, the gift of faith, the gift of miracles, the gifts of healings. And then he has it divided into the declarative gifts, and that's the gift of prophecy, the gift of uh, uh, speaking in tongues, and the gift of interpretation of tongues. Because they're what are declared, you know. And so you got revelation or uh, 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 discerning gifts, you got dynamic or power gifts, and you got declarative or vocal gifts. And that's a, if you study them in that way, and that's what we're going to do, um, it, it'll be a lot easier to understand and to see. But let's finish this 1 Corinthians chapter 12 here. He distributes them how? As he wills to who? To each one, to each one. For as the body has one and has many members, but all the members of that one body being many are one body, so also is Christ. In other words, who's the body of Christ? The church. Cowboys for Jesus is the body of Christ. Thank you. That's something to get excited about. But so is the cowboys at the cross in Delta, Colorado. Huh? So is Convivencia Cristiana de Chalón in Chiapas, Mexico. See, they're all part of the body of Christ. And we, even in this body of Christ that we call Cowboys for Jesus, we are individuals. Okay, next verse. It's going to make sense. For by one spirit we were all baptized into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and have all been made to drink up that one spirit. When you're born again, born into the body of Christ, you become a child of God. You have the Holy Spirit living in you. God is present in you. When you get on the scene, God's in there. Why? Because he's in you. Do people see Jesus in you? Do they see the Holy Spirit in you? Do you recognize that when you go somewhere, you're taking God with you? See, David in the Psalms, he says, man, where can I go where the Spirit isn't with me? Huh? Can I go to the depths of the sea? Can I go to hell? Come on. He said, wherever I go, the Holy Spirit's are with me. Read it. So we are the body of Christ, and we are individuals that put all of this together. And he spends the next verses, and I'm not going to uh, belabor the point. Uh, did we cover 14? Yeah. For in fact, the body is not one member, but many. Everybody say many. many. So he goes on in the next verses, uh, verses 15 through 26, and really into 27. We're going to pick up there in a minute. He goes and he talks all about the body. Can the hand say to the eye, I'm not the body because I'm not the eye? Do you know you need people that can have a vision, a, a long term vision for the church? But how can it work if everybody's got a vision for the church and nobody's got a hand to carry it out? We need hands. We need feet. Come on. We need legs. We need elbows pushing people out of the way or whatever. Come on. See, each of us are individuals in the body of Christ. And what he's trying to get across is these are individual gifts. They're given to each one as he wills so that what? It will be a profit to the whole body. When somebody gets up and gives a word of prophecy, it comes for exhortation, for comfort. It comes for edification to the body of Christ, to build up. If somebody gets up and gives a word and it doesn't edify, it doesn't comfort, or it doesn't exhort, it's not from God. Are you with me? How many want, to, if you're hurting on the inside, you'd like to be healed? Well, then we need the gift of healing. Come on. 
They need the gift of healing for that part of the body of Christ. Because it says when one part hurts, the whole body hurts. I don't know about you, but I've hit my fingers with a hammer before. And I'll tell you what, I hurt all over. I mean, you can ask my wife, you know. <laughs> I hurt all over. Come on, you can stub your toe and it hurts. All over, right? You see, the body of Christ, the spiritual body, we, we so, sometimes we want to get so religious that we put all this stuff up in some out of the shape type situation and everything. We need to keep it practical. We need to keep it down to earth where we live because that's what God intends. He wants the body of Christ to be built up and the way that it is is through the spiritual gifts operating and moving and functioning in the church of God. Amen. But there's order to it. We're going to see that next week. I'm getting way ahead of myself. Anyway, he sums it all up. And he says the body is important. Each one has its own individual part. If one part, if, if my little finger tries to be a thumb, it won't work. Come on. But you know you need your toes. Even a toe that you can't see. Oh, some of them, the ladies paint them so pretty sometimes. <laughs> Have you noticed? I mean, they got, well. But I mean, they do. But others wear them in boots. You know, I wouldn't paint my toes. <laughs> I'm not even on. How did I get off on that? Because we're individuals in the body of Christ, but we need each and every part of the body. We need you. Say, I'm important. Turn your neighbor and say, I'm important. Because I'm a part of the body of Christ. And I'm needed. My gift is needed in the body of Christ. So we pray to the Holy Spirit. We say, Holy Spirit, use me. I'm available to you. Use me. In the body of Christ. That should be our prayer for every one of us. Verse 27. We're going to just skip right on down. Are y'all still with me? Yeah. Okay. Now you are the body of Christ and members individually. We kind of covered that, right? Verse 28. And God has appointed these in the church. First apostles, prophets, teachers. After that, miracles, gifts of helps or healings. Helps, administrations, variety of tongues. This is just a partial list. In Romans chapter 12, they have another little list of gifts that God has given to the body of Christ. Now, here's where the question comes in. God has appointed. Who is it? It's God, right? It's the Holy Spirit gives these spiritual nine spiritual gifts that we were talking about as He wills to each one. Everyone is looking. What gifts do you have? Okay, but then he goes on and he says, okay, now he's done that. He asks a question. Are all apostles? Hmm? No. Come on. No. You're not an apostle? No. I'm not either. Are all prophets? No. no. Are all teachers? No. Are all workers of miracles? No. Do all have gifts of healings? No. Do all speak with tongues? No. Do all interpret tongues? but earnestly desire the best gifts. What's the best gift to you? To somebody that needs healing, the best gift is the gift of healing. Are you with me? Yeah. To somebody that's searching God's, oh Lord, what do I do? The best gift you can get is somebody prophesying. Come on. Hearing a word from God. Prophecy is hearing a word from God and sharing it with somebody. Amen. Are you... So we need the gifts to operate in our lives. I want to see what is the best gift for me. Did you know that God can use you? Come on. In a ministry of helps. But all of a sudden, He gives you a word of prophecy for somebody? <gasps> but wait a minute, you're in the ministry of helps. You can't do the prophecy. Who says? You see, he's got these nine gifts. He's got the word of knowledge. He's got the word of wisdom. He's got the discerning of spirits. Come on, are you with me? 
He's got faith. And I'm talking about different faith than the fruit of faith. Huh? Come on, fruit of faith comes naturally, right? The gift of faith is a supernatural faith that believes God. It's the kind of faith that Elijah had. When Elijah prayed, you read about it in James, he says his prayer was effectual and fervent because Elijah, he says, there'll be no rain until I say so. You better have some faith, buddy. Oh, come on. He declared, he went to the king. He went to the head of the country. He said, there's not going to be any rain except until I say so. How could he say that? Because he saw all the people of, that should be people of God, Israel, was serving pagan idols. And the Bible says, I'll pour out my rain when you serve me. But if you turn to idols, I'll stop the rain. He says, whew, I see that in the Bible. I'm going to say what the Bible says. Huh? But he had to have that super... You understand what I'm saying? So faith, a supernatural faith. And then there's a, the supernatural gift of miracles. And there's a supernatural gift of healings. And there's a supernatural gift of prophecy. Can somebody get up and say, oh, well, the Bible says. Come on. And read it. But is that prophecy? No. You've got to be moved by the Holy Spirit that gives that to you and you get up. Does that mean that you're a prophet for the rest of your life? No. I mean, but, but people think that. They get used by prophecy one time or maybe twice and they think, oh, man, I'm a prophet of God. <laughs> Come on. Like there's something special. Who is it that does the prophesying? It's the Holy Spirit through them. See, the love of God is poured out through us by the Holy Spirit. We're just the channel. I mean, you know, they dig water wells for countries, you know, to give water, clean water to people and all. Can you imagine the pipe? Come on. Say, oh, look how wonderful I am. I've provided all this water. Well, it took somebody to dig the hole, right? And it takes somebody else to pump the water. You get my picture? We're just pipes. We're just pipes. The Holy Spirit is doing all the movement. But you've got to open yourself up. How many know a closed pipe won't let the water go through? See, we're to desire the very best gifts. Lord, use me some way. Whatever, whatever is best for the body through me, do it. Are you with me? Where are we? How about 1 Corinthians 13, 1? How many know that the fruit of the Spirit require love? Yep. Amen. Huh? We had two weeks, right? Come on. In fact, man, I, I really believe, the more I look at it and said it, I believe that the fruit of the Spirit is love. Amen. And it's just manifested in all of these other fruit that we talked about. Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels. What is it talking about? Prophecy or speaking in tongues. Though I speak with the tongues of men or of angels and have not love, I'm a sounding brass or a clanging cymbal. Huh? How many have ever heard a cling? You know? Yeah, like hitting your head on something? No. <laughs> but I mean, it doesn't have any sound, does it? It's not a beautiful sound. But you can get that same symbol. Now, in fact, remember we went to a ball game in Austin because my grandson, my youngest grandson, is playing in a marching band, right? And he's out there, he's tooting his horn, and literally. <laughs> and uh, did so great. But they had symbols out there. And I thought about this verse because when the symbols hit, it flowed with everything that was there, and it was a good sound. Huh? You see what I'm saying? Why? Because they were flowing with what the music guy was doing, right? Okay? It puts it together. But if you don't have love, you can do all the speaking in tongues you want to. You can do all the prophesying you want to. If you're not doing it in love to the body of Christ, it's a clanging symbol. It doesn't make any sense at all in the music of life. Are you with me? Let's go on. 
And though I have the gift of prophecy, understand all mysteries. That's the word of knowledge. And all knowledge, and though I have all faith, so that I can stop the rain. Come on. So that I can remove mountains, but have not love. I'm nothing. You can't flow in the gifts and not do it in love. You know why? Because love is sacrificial giving. God's love to us is not what he can get out of us, but what he can give to us. It's grace. And the same thing with the gifts of the Spirit. If we don't operate in the love of God, if we don't let these gifts flow through us with the love of God, it's not worth a thing. Next verse. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, you can be a big giver if you don't do it with love and the right motive. It ain't worth nothing. And though I give my body to be burned, and have not love, it profits me nothing. But I've given, I've done so much for the church. I've done this, I've done that. Do you know you can't earn the gifts? You can't be good enough to flow in the gifts? You can't work hard enough to have the gifts? It's what? It's the grace of God that gives the gifts, and we by faith receive the gift from God. Let's jump down to verse 8. Verse 4 through 7 in 1 Corinthians 13 tells us of how love demonstrates itself, the characteristics of love. Verse 8, and I love this, love never fails. Love never fails. God never fails. God is love. Hello? You know, I... <laughs> I challenge you, go back and read verses 4 through 7 when you get home. And instead of putting love in there, put your name. And then when you get down to verse 8, say, I never fail. If we'll walk in love, if we'll minister in love, if we'll be a channel of blessing in love, if we'll flow through the gifts of the Spirit in love, you'll never fail as a Christian. But whether there's prophecies, they'll fail. Whether there's tongues, they'll cease. Whether there's knowledge, it will vanish away. Next verse. For we know in part and we prophesy in part. Next verse. But when that which is perfect has come, when that which is in part will be done away. When Jesus returns to the earth, you're not going to need any of these gifts that we talked about. You're not going to need prophecy. You're not going to need miracles. You're not going to need healing. You're not going to need tongues. You're not going to need interpretation of tongues. You won't need the words of knowledge because it says that we'll know even as we are known. You see, when you pass out of time and you pass into eternity, everything changes. But how many know we're not in eternity yet? We're in the nasty, imperfect now. You see, when that which is perfect comes, then these things will be done away with. But perfect hasn't come yet. I know this will shock to some of you. <laughs> no. When perfect comes, that will be done away, but we're not there yet. And so we need the gifts of the Holy Spirit to operate through our body as individuals, as the Holy Spirit gives us. So next week, I want to pick up. I want to continue right here. And we're going to talk about those nine gifts. We're going to talk about what they are and how we operate in them in love. So please, come back. Turn to your neighbor. Say, I'll be back. Now say it like Arnold Schwarzenegger. I'll be back. Yeah. I'll be back. Okay. Did you get something out of this today? Okay, praise the Lord. God, we praise you and thank you. Lord, we thank you for your Holy Spirit, dear Lord. And we come to you, we do desire the very best gifts, Lord, that you have for us. We make ourselves available to you to be a channel of blessing, Heavenly Father, to the body of Christ. Help us to fulfill our call, our ministry, to be an active part of what you are doing here at Cowboys for Jesus. We praise you and thank you, Lord, that you're going to use us in these days ahead. 
Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for everyone that uh, participated in bringing food for us to eat and enjoy. We thank you for all the people that work in the kitchen that make it available to us, Lord. And we ask, Father, according to your word, you say that you bless our bread and our water. You remove sickness from the midst of us. So, Father, we receive our meal and our drink blessed in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. You know you're dismissed at Cowboy Church when the preacher says, y'all come back now, you hear?